How we doing, folks? So, the other day on my IG, my Instagram, I posted a Instagram story saying that I wanted to do a YouTube video critiquing y'all's photos. So I posted a story, and uh, you guys sent in a lot of photos. I got over 200 uh, photo submissions to be critiqued, and I apologize to the folks that I don't get to critique and get to your photos because I just can't fit that many photos in to this video. But I picked out my favorite 30 or so that I figured I could kind of educate on the best. And uh, I just want to say, y'all have some very, very beautiful photos. So many photos I've seen just have been blowing me away. So very, very nice work. I'm very excited to be able to uh, take a look through you guys' work. This is really cool for me. So uh, without further ado, let's jump right into the first photo. All right, so we got this shot right here. And this is a beautiful photo of a bull elk bugling, which is what they do in their rut to attract the latest. This photo is from Robert Andrish. Andrish, I think I'm pronouncing that right. And uh, yeah, it's a lovely photo. It's, uh, he sent it to me as a very low res version, so it's kind of hard to tweak or do anything like that. But um, as you can see, you got a lot, a lot of breath coming out, so it must have been a really chilly morning. And r right off the bat, I really like how he framed it with the elk to the right of the frame. That's what you want to do when you're composing a wildlife photo. You want to avoid putting it right in the center. I mean, there's definitely situations where you can do that, but it always just looks better when they're off to the side like this. And <clears throat> you always want the dead space to be where they're looking. So in this case, the elk is facing to the left there, and most of the dead space is to the left. So that's really lovely. One thing I will say, that I personally would change is just this this bright uh, bottom section of the photo. It's it's just distracting to me. Um, so what I would do personally, and like I said, this is a low res photo, so I can't really do much. But I would just go here to create new mask, and I would do a linear gradient, and I would just fill this bottom portion here. And this would look a lot better uh, if it was a higher res photo. But uh, and then I just drop the exposure on that and uh, let's see I'd probably even drop the saturation a little bit maybe not that much but this is just a quick little run through uh, I'm gonna try to get through these photos a little bit quicker because I've got quite a few here um, so I don't want to take too much time but yeah just you guys get the point I just want to darken it a little bit just to kind of keep your eye on the elk uh, the before you know it just kind of takes your eye right to the bottom portion so little quick little fix there and uh, yeah it's a beautiful shot uh, nicely done Robert moving along now this I really like this is a photo of a brown bear from John Quipper Quipier if you're French <laughs> sorry if I'm uh, mispronouncing your name John but uh, beautiful shot man really really like it a lot love the movement in the front paw here personally I think there's just a little bit too much dead space on the sides. So right off the bat, I would just take this in here. It looks like it's a 16 by nine crop. And I would just get rid of some of that, um, some of the top there. And this is one of those photos, like I was saying in the last photo, where usually a, a subject dead center doesn't really work. I kind of think it does for this shot, just because there's not a whole lot going on other than the splashies uh, on the sides. So I think having this bear directly in the center actually works okay. Now, it's hard to judge because I don't know what this situation was, but ideally, I would like to see a little bit more space um, on the bottom half of the photo. Cause like I was saying with this elk shot, see how where the elk is, is looking, there's all that dead space, kind of makes the eye wonder like, ooh, what's it looking at, you know? And with this bear shot, <clears throat> you can tell it's honed in on probably a fish right in front of it. Um, and I would have just liked to have had more water in the foreground. Uh, but I don't know the situation. There could have been rocks there. There could have been other things uh, that, you know, made it so we couldn't, couldn't do that. Or, you know, it's tough when something's running at you and panning. 
you know, you can't can't get it perfect. But great job, John. That's a that's a pretty sick shot, man. Moving along. Look at this cute little beaver. Don't y'all just love little beavers? <laughs> this is a very cute shot. I like it a lot. I like that you can see his little little hands there. They're little alien looking hands. <laughs> Uh, I like the textures and the fur. It's very cute. One thing I noticed right away is this this uh, stick right here. I you know I would love to see that not be there for sure. Uh, it's it's definitely a little bit distracting. Um, that probably could have been uh, avoided if you were to just get a little bit lower. Uh, although I do see some stuff here in the foreground, so this could have been the lowest you could have gotten in this particular situation. But if you could have gotten lower, got an eye level shot, it would have been a lot more impactful. Um, and and you, you would have avoided having this stick here. Now, I do want to just lift the shadows a little bit just to recover some of that detail. And I do think that the eye here could be brightened up a little bit just to make that little shimmer in the eye stand out like that. And uh, yeah, just to make the face kind of stand out a little bit. But yeah, like I said, if you could have gotten lower, that would have been better. But uh, over, overall, a very cute shot by uh, Casey Feldner. I almost forgot to, to say your name there. Very good shot, Casey. Um, I like it. It's adorable. Moving on. This is a, sh a shot of a, obviously, a bugling bull elk again. Uh, this time by John Cannon. And... Right off the bat, it's a very cool moment. Uh, very nice dark background. A lot of the times when I'm photographing wildlife, I look for the darkest background because it really, really makes the subject stand out. Um, and it's a cool shot, man. The, the only thing is, it's it just feels so tight. You know, the composition, the square composition like that where you just have barely any bit of room here um, on the left and then any bit here, he's just dead center. Um, I would I would have loved to have seen it be a closer composition to to this shot right here You know a little bit more wide where you get more atmosphere, and then it just gives it room to breathe um, Another thing I It just seems a little warm to me if you just cool it down just a little bit like that It starts to look a little more natural um, Sometimes it's just easy to go overboard on the warmth in photos. I've been there too, but uh, but yeah, man It's a cool moment um, very Nice elk, what a beast, huh? Jeez. But, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Yeah, I think you just, because it, it, it probably was, and who knows, maybe there were some distracting factors in the background to the right or left where you wanted to avoid, but um, it just it just feels tight. It just needs to breathe a little bit. But, uh, yeah, cool moment, man. Next. Next up, we have this adorable little foxy. This is from uh, Spencer Heekman. I think I'm saying that right. And it's a nice shot. Beautiful fox, uh, looks like you got focus on the eye there, and uh, the one thing I will say about this is to me there's just too much dead space on the top, it just, <clears throat> a lot of that just doesn't need to be there, it's just, uh, yeah, it's a lot of dead space, so really I would just make this a 8.5 uh, by 11 size format and just kind of come in like this a little bit. And boom, I, I think that looks a lot better. I think this needs to be, uh, again, just cool off just a little bit, like that. I might even add a smidge of a vignette, just a little bit like that. See, it went from there to there, and uh, yeah, it's a beautiful shot. It's a nice pose. It just that that top section that just it, it didn't need to be there. It, it, it had too much breathing room on top, but nicely done, uh, Spencer. Good job, man. All right, next, moving, moving through these pretty good. Whew, this shot, <laughs> this shot, is, this is my type of shot. So this was, uh, this is a barn owl taken by Ollie Johnson, and Ollie, you crushed this. This is, uh, like I said, this is my type of photo. This is sick. It's just moody as all get out. You have this bright uh, barn owl just right in the corner there. You see how I framed it just a little bit to the right. Um, it's just moody as hell. I think it could even be a little bit moodier. <laughs> if this were my shot, I would just uh, go to this create new mask here, do a subject detect here, select subject, and Lightroom does a great job selecting the subject, and when you hit invert right here, it inverts to the background instead of the subject. 
where now I can take this exposure and just bring it down a little bit more and then I'm gonna add a little bit of contrast maybe bring the cool tints down make it look more like blue hour see and just made it make it just a little bit punchier but god man you really crushed this shot I I really dig it this like I said this is my type of photo so and these guys are not easy to capture flying like that so uh, props to you Ollie good job man okay next we have this hawk now I'm not good with my hawk species so uh, <laughs> I do not know what type of hawk this is but this photo was taken by uh, Travis McCabe and uh, really really cool action here captured it's uh, it's really really neat looks like you got focus on the hawk um, the things I notice is when you zoom in it, it just it looks over sharpened you start getting this real kind of gritty look when you just take the sharpening just a little bit too far and that's the look we kind of get when we punch in a little bit and it was probably uh, put through maybe sharpening AI or something like that just to bring the sharpening up and it doesn't look bad don't get me wrong um, it just looks a little bit over sharpened to me um, and again there's just a little bit too much on the top here in my opinion uh, again these are just my thoughts um, on it so what I would do is again I would just probably that already looks like an eight and a half by eleven so I would just take it in some just like that I think I think that just is a lot better see again you want there to be dead space where the subject is looking so see how this hawk is looking directly to the left just add a little bit of that blank space there to make you wonder what it's looking at and uh, I think that looks a lot better just like that let's just try a little select subject here and try to darken that background see what it looks like yeah see I would I would darken the background a smidge uh, maybe take the cools down a little bit and I think that I think that just kind of you know brings it up to the next level but man that's a tough tough shot to capture so uh, props to you there Travis good job awesome shot moving along here we have one of my favorite animals of all time this is a great gray owl. Looks like a young uh, sub-adult or owlet, I guess you would say. This shot is from Phil Henley. And it, I really like it. It's, it's a good shot. Now, right off the bat, what stands out to me the most are these uh, highlights in the back. The highlights of sky you have right here. And, <clears throat> again, I don't know the situation. <clears throat> I don't know if where would have been a clean background. Maybe there was a tree there. But... If you can move around, background is one of the most important things in photography, in my opinion, and it's what I look for. As soon as I find a subject, I'm like, all right, what, what does the background look like? And I'll bet you if you could have just moved around just a little bit, you could have find, found a cleaner background um, where, you, where you don't get these highlights because those just take your eye off the main subject, off the owl here. Um, but, but I like the eye contact. I love this mossy perch. God, that's killer. Um, I would love to love to find one on a mossy perch like that. But, uh, yeah, if you could just avoid uh, having those bright highlights in the background, it would be a lot better. But good job, man. Really, really, really good shot by Phil. Next. <sighs> wow. <laughs> this is one of my favorites. So this photo is by, and I might butcher this name here, Antonia, 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 <laughs> uh, Bobbert. This is a stunning shot. This is everything I look for in a photo. The bokeh is fantastic. Uh, and it was at 6.3, 600 millimeters, 6.3. And you just get a lot of these bokeh balls. Um, nice and sharp on the face you have these orange little bokeh balls from the leaves in the background it's just moody um, I love this this uh, tree here to the left just uh, kind of framing the goat I don't know what kind of animal this is it's cool looking god it's wild looks like uh, I don't even know but uh, I think I would just crop it a smidge just to get rid of some of that on the right, something like that. And shoot, I might just might just add a little bit of a vignette here. Just to make it a little more moody. Add a teeny 
teeny bit of contrast. And then if we do this subject detect here, select subject, create new mask. Uh, okay, it didn't do the best job doing that, but if we hit invert here, if we just take the clarity down a little bit, it'll even be more, more dreamy. So let's see where, yeah, so I didn't do much to it at all. This is a fantastic shot um, by Antonia. I think I'm pronouncing that right but gorgeous, really, really nicely done. And again, the subject is just a little bit to the right of the frame there. You don't want it to be directly in the middle. Um, very well done, gorgeous, gorgeous shot. Next, we have this moose by Ryan Narwold. <clears throat> and it's a pretty cool pose. I uh, Sometimes sometimes when they're eating like that, it, it kind of looks weird. And, you know, it just more looks like a snapshot. But I, I do like the pose here. The antlers look really, really cool. Um, one thing about it, though, is it's just too saturated. It, uh, and it's easy to go overboard on the saturation. But see, when you start zooming in, the, the moose is blue. It's a Smurf moose. <laughs> um, and that's just what happens when you oversaturate a little bit. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to take this vibrance down. And then if we go down here to the color... Uh, adjustments and go to saturation we can go to blue and take that down oh nope it was on hue let's go to saturation go to blue and take that down and that gets rid of that blue hue on the moose because we don't want a smurf moose um, and then we can take the saturation just to back up a little bit um, and there you go that's already a lot better let's see what select subject does on this guy let's see it light run all right it did a pretty good job so let's invert it again so it's adjusting the background take the brightness down a little bit and let's take the clarity down so you get a little more separation yeah something like that see how much more dreamy that looks because this background is kind of chaotic but when you take the clarity down like that it makes you focus more on the moose so if we look at the before after it just makes it look a lot more natural um, but yeah, nicely job, um, Ryan, thank you for submitting this shot. All right, moving along. What a beautiful, beautiful bobcat. So this is by, as you can see on the watermark here, Tracy Dottie. Um, and I really, really like it a lot. It's a, it's a really nice pose. God, they're just beautiful animals, huh? Look at that, look at that, look at that little stubby little tail. <laughs> And I like the composition. I wish there were a little bit more breathing room on the left here. Just a little bit more, um, yeah, just a little bit more breathing room there. And if you had a shot, Tracy, just a little bit after this one where you get the uh, left leg here a little bit farther up so you get more separation between the two, that would be ideal. The separation between the back legs is perfect. But when you're getting a, when you're photographing something walking like that, it really looks better when you get separation between every leg. Um, I still really like the movement of the left paw; it gives it a little bit of action for sure. But if you had a shot just a little bit after this, maybe where you just get a little bit more separation between um, between those two legs, that would make it make it money. Um, but beautiful shot. I don't know what I would really do with this editing wise. I might. Go to this select subject. This new select subject tool in Lightroom is fantastic. <laughs> uh, do this again. Let's just see if we bring the clarity down, bring the dehaze uh, up a little bit. Maybe add a little bit of a little bit of a uh, blue tint to the background. Yeah, but uh, that's a beautiful shot, Tracy. Um, I'm jealous. I've been looking for bobcats for a while, <laughs> so that's really nice. All right, let's see. Next, all right, we got a lot of moose photos. This is by Chase Hoff, and man, I really, really like this photo, Chase. Normally, when I photograph, when something's in a really, really thick part of the woods like this, it looks really cluttery, but I don't know, it kind of works here. There's a lot of textures and really, really cool colors um, in all of those leaves, leaves, <laughs> I should say. Um, and I, I, uh, I really like it. Just the colors really, really, really work together. I might add a, let's go to create new mask. Let's just try this linear filter up here and just cover the, the first little quarter of the, the top of the frame and add a little bit of dehaze. 
it gives it that effect like the sun's kind of shining through maybe a little bit of brightness I don't know if I like that or not it's an idea let's see for after ah, I kind of like it and then if we were to create new mask do a radial gradient filter put it right over this mooses mooses Mises moosin <laughs> right over the moose's face the moose's face here uh, let's go to invert again and let's just darken the photo a little bit more see something like that before after and I think that's a really really beautiful shot it's uh it's just the textures in it are are fantastic and it looks like you you got focus it's a low resolution photo but nailed focus on the face uh, it was obviously raining or because uh, the, the moose is is wet and that adds a lot of texture so um, beautiful shot chase thanks for sharing moving along so this is a moose that I'm familiar with we call him uh, either Bondurant or Sheridan some people call them both out here but gorgeous gorgeous bull moose I've photographed a bunch of times and uh, this is a photo from Kyle Pope and it's really nice that light is insane I mean it's just gorgeous this is the kind of light we wildlife photographers dream of you know you get some soft golden light hitting the moose <clears throat> with that beautiful blue dark stormy background you got the light hitting his face perfectly it's really really nice I would have preferred to see a horizontal I think of this photo um, instead of a vertical it just feels kind of it, it feels kind of tight and there's just a little bit too much space up here um, I would have loved to have seen a composition where there's just more empty space on the left a horizontal um, where it just shows more where he's looking but in the meantime uh, let's just do an eight and a half by 11 crop here and just yeah, just see what this looks like so yeah I think I think already that looks uh, that looks a little bit better there just seemed to be a little bit too much dead space um, shoot man I might even crank the blues a little bit brighten the blues a little bit uh, here take the saturation of the blue up a little bit just to make them pop see like that just gives it a little bit more of that that cool uh, cool and warm uh, mixture that works really really well in photography so uh, yeah thanks for the uh, submission Kyle that is a beautiful shot so this is a photo of a young bull elk by Cody uh, Cody McNeil and I really really like it and another thing I really like about this photo is he took it with a rebel t6 Canon camera uh, paired with a 70 to 200 2.8 so it just shows that the camera doesn't isn't as important as the lens like this looks like a beautiful you get a lot of separation in the background the colors the contrast looks really really nice and it was taken with a t6 so it just shows you don't have to drop a ton of money and to, to get great results uh, and again like this last photo here you get a lot of that uh, warm mixture with the coolness on top and that just looks really really good I would crop it I think there's too much dead space on the bottom here so I would crop it a little bit again just uh, just to get rid of some of that dead space something like that shoot I might even go a little bit more I'm just gonna freestyle it here like that I think that works really really well and uh, just to add a little bit more separation we're gonna go back into this select subject all right so it just selected its face <laughs> but uh, close enough so if we go to invert again and uh, let's just take the clarity down a little bit more uh, maybe the brightness a smidge just to make it pop a little more and I would add a little bit more contrast to this something like that and uh, yeah I really really like it it's a beautiful pose that background is killer I like this tree branch here it's not distracting at least in my opinion I think it adds something to it so uh, nicely done Cody moving along all right, so this one, it took me a second. This is by uh, Kristen Halsey. Very nicely done, Kristen. So this is a wolf uh, in some kind of mist. Maybe it was by the river um, or just a foggy morning. But it's really, really moody. I dig it a lot. I don't know if I like the square crop. I would have liked to have seen just a more, uh, just a more kind of uh, vertical shot. Well, not vertical, but just less, less of a square, <laughs> shall I say. Um, 
just because, I don't know, it just looks more like an Instagram edit. But uh, other than that, it's just moody. You have this wolf that you can barely see in the midst and it's running. It looks like it might be on the hunt. It's, it's dang cool. Uh, I would maybe make the wolf stand out just a little bit more if we go into this linear gradient here. Pull this up uh, over the wolf area. Let's move that down a little bit. Yeah, like something like that. And if we do that and just bring the blacks down some, not that much, but something like that. Maybe bring the warmth up to make the colors match. See, just like that. Just make the wolf stand out a little bit more, just so you your eye has something to go to a little bit quicker. But I love the moodiness of it. I love that you can kind of barely tell what it is. And uh, it's a very nice shot. Uh, Kristen, well done. Thank you for submitting. My shoulder. Bang. I'm sitting in a weird position here. <laughs> All right, next, this is an adorable little raccoon. Looks like a little baby. Uh, this shot is from Austin Foltz. And it's a very cute little fellow. Look at him, looks like a little panda up in the tree. Uh, right off the bat, it, it looks very, very green to me. Um, I don't like when a photo looks greenish. Green tints bug me. So what I'm gonna do to combat that is go to the tint here, make it, put the magenta up a little bit and then we go to the, the temperature and bring the coolness down. And already, look at that. Look at that difference. Before, after. It looks so much more natural. Um, what else? Let's see. The background, there's a little bit too much detail there. So let's see if we go to select subject and see how it does on this one. Ah, it did a pretty good job. Invert that again. And let's bring the clarity down quite a bit on this one. Like that. And I'm going to bring the dehaze down to make it look like it's storming a little bit harder, something like that. And uh, let's just brush, if we go to create new mask, brush, shrink the brush size here. I'm just gonna bring the whites in the eye up a little bit, and again, I'm doing this really quickly. Uh, I'm not doing the most accurate job just to get through these a little faster. Bring the whites up a little bit like that. And let's see, before, after, look at that. I think that's a much, much cleaner looking image uh, after that edit, but uh, beautiful, beautiful shot, very well captured with that little fella hugging the tree. Yeah, it's just a very cute shot, so uh, nicely done, Austin. All right. <laughs> I don't really have anything to say about this one. This is a photo from Matt Poole, and uh, it's just pretty much perfect. I am jealous of this shot, Matt. This photo is insane. <laughs> it really is an insane photo. The uh, the light, you got a little bit of that backlight with the rain or snow. It's tack, tack sharp. I think I know which owl this is. I'm not gonna say where, but I'm pretty sure I've photographed him. Uh, a younger gray gray owl. The, it looks like rain, but you have this, this the little white rain spots. It's just beautiful, man. Um, Maybe one thing I would do if I were to do something just to make something up to, to, to do is just to crop some of this right side out. Yeah, I think I like that better actually. Um, just to uh, to hone in more on that owl, but god dang man. Gorgeous, gorgeous shot. Like I said, I'm, I'm jealous of that one. Alright, moving on. This photo is by Steven uh, Hesker. And I freaking love this photo. <laughs> this photo is awesome. To me, it's hard to make a ground squirrel look interesting, but uh, by golly, man, you did it. The the tones in this photo are fantastic. You have a, again, you have a little bit of that cool meets warm dynamic going on here. Um, it looks like Africa, but it's a very very cool shot. One thing that you might be able to do to make it look a little tiny bit better, not that it needs really anything. It looks fantastic the way it is is sometimes when you have these blown out highlights in the sun, you're not gonna recover those highlights. Those highlights are gone. But sometimes if you make them a little brighter, it actually looks better. So if we go into uh, our linear gradient and just make a circle around the, whoops. Sorry, not linear gradient, I meant radial gradient. Uh, make a little circle around the sun here. If it'll let me move it, there we go. And then dehaze it. So let's go negative on dehaze. It just gives it more of a, and let's add a little warmth, more of like a, a, a bokeh kind of effect instead of kind of 
unrecoverable highlights. I, I, I like that look personally, but again, that's just personal um, preference. But I love this shot. I think it's great. The clouds, the sunbeams. Uh, what a cute little fella. <laughs> this is his little world. We're just living in it. All right, moving on. All right, so this photo of Bison in Yellowstone is by Patrick Sherrill. And so this photo, he let me know in the email, this was actually a 35 millimeter film photo. So to me, you just get such a raw effect from those film cameras. This is no editing at all, he was saying. Um, and it's just a cool shot, man. I really, really dig it. It like almost kind of hurts to edit a film photo because you're like, ah, it's so raw the way it is, you know? Um, it's cool. One thing, if I were to say one thing is, see the bison on the right here, you have perfect separation in all four legs, whereas the one on the left, uh, that leg, the two legs are just overlapping, and I know especially with film photography, it's so hard to, you know, to capture the right, the right exact moment, whereas, you know, me with my Z9 here, 20 frames a second, I feel like I'm cheating, but uh, if you could have got this one on the left with the same separation, just a split second later, it would have been just a tad bit better, but... Man, this is a cool, gnarly, rad film shot. And the light's dope. You have these storm clouds in the background, but the sunlight hitting them, it's giving me some serious uh, Revenant vibes, and I'm digging it. So, nicely done, Patrick. All right, so we have this big boy from Kayla. Kayla Matthews. Uh, and I really like it, Kayla. I photographed this scene. Also, this is a pretty popular... Um, find along the Yellowstone River a few couple years ago now um, <clears throat> in Yellowstone where this this big male grizzly actually took down this elk there's video on YouTube if y'all look up uh, Hayden Valley grizzly bear taking down elk I think it'll show up but this elk ran into the river and this huge bear just jumped on top of it and took it down and dragged it up on shore this thing was a beast and uh, I got some some photos of it as well but I really like this take on it it's it's moody it's dark you got a good pose in the grizzly's leg, um, sticking up like that. I would have liked if you would have panned down just a smidge to get uh, the ears and the top of the head in the reflection. Um, I just don't really like how uh, the head of the bear on the reflection just kind of is cut off. But uh, other than that, I uh, I really dig it. Let's see, what would I do anything to this? I might make it a little cooler. Like it was taken around blue hour, maybe bring the saturation down just a just a touch. Bring the contrast up. Maybe the brightness down, but the whites up. That adds some contrast. Something like that. I'm just give it a little bit of a punch. But uh, yeah, very cool shot. Um, Kayla, thank you for submitting. We're getting along here, folks. We don't have many more. All right, so this we have a beautiful little Yodi, little coyote, giving you the death stare. Look at that little fella. And uh, it's a cool scene. This photo is by Jackie Jones. Thank you for submitting, Jackie. Um, one thing about the shot that could have made it 10 times more impactful is if you would have just got down low and got eye level with it. When you're eye level, there's a whole lot less distraction. See here, you just have this busy background here. Um, that is just kind of taken away from the little fella down here. If you would have just got down a little bit lower, and there you could have been from a you know you could have been on a slope um, that you couldn't have got down potentially. I don't know the situation, but if you can get lower, always get lower. It, it just makes it a lot more intimate, uh, and you probably would have been able to have a nice clean background where you get more of that separation. Uh, whereas here you just get this 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 mush background here. If I were to Try a select subject here. Oh, did a good job. Do this invert again. Let's try to clean it up a little bit by de putting some clarity down and maybe the dehaze. Mm. Something like that just to clean it up a little bit. And then if we were to do the same select subject uh, but on the animal here and just bring the whites up in the, in the coyote. You know, that makes him stand out a little bit more, him or her. Um, but yeah, if you would have got low, it just would have been a lot more, uh, there would have been a lot more separation between it. But uh, thank you very much for the submission, Jackie. Appreciate it. Next up, 
This is a cool shot. I, I was looking at this one for a while. The movement, see, it's just perfect. You have perfect separation between, and this is a low resolution file, but you have perfect separation between the uh, the hooves of the horse and this other horse's head. If the if the hooves were overlapping the head, it just wouldn't look nearly as good. The leg movement, look at the horse on the bottom right. You have perfect separation in those legs. Um, and then the movement in the hair there. It's like an Elvis horse, look at that. I ain't nothing but a Mustang. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> uh, I would crop this a little bit because they're right in the dead center of the frame. So right off the bat, I'm gonna make it so they're uh, more towards the left of the frame. Something like that is what I would do. And you have this much brighter area in the top right, which I'm sure you added. Um, oh, I forgot to add, sorry, I keep forgetting to say the names right off the bat. This is Maddie Clark took this photo. Uh, thank you for the submission, Maddie. This is a really, really cool shot. Uh, but I think there was just a little bit of added brightness here to the right, which I actually do that technique quite a bit. It just adds a little bit more uh, kind of dynamic in which way the sun was coming through. I just think it was a little bit <clears throat> overdone. So if we go to a, a linear filter here, put it over this side, and just darken that a little bit. And there's not much dynamic range here uh, because of the low resolution file. But I think that looks a little bit better. This photo almost screams black and white to me. Let's just see. Ooh, I do like that. And let's bring the whites up a little bit blacks down and let's see if we select subject will it's will it select both of them let's see oh yeah lightroom for the win are you kidding me all right so let's invert it bring the clarity down and then let's see what else is there anything else i would do maybe the dehaze just a little bit and before after i really like it in black and white i do like the subtle colors where you got going on here maddie um, with the like the slight yellows and the oranges. I do like the color version as well, but I think if, if this were my image, I would go with the black and white. Um, but awesome shot. Bellissimo, well done. Next, we have this bear family from Nicole Askew. And it's a really nice shot. You got really good poses between the bears. There's good separation. There's no separation in between them, but that's fine because they all have really, really good poses. Um, with their paws up and they're all looking up. One of them's not like sniffing its ass or something, <laughs> you know, something like that. They're all looking up. Um, I'm just personally not a fan of road road shots, personally. Um, I know that's a big part of these park animals' lives, so it can tell a story of, of you know, kind of coexisting with humans in these national parks. But I just am not a fan of roadside shots or shots of animals on the road. Um, but it's a very cool poses. I think I might darken the background a little bit if we add a linear gradient. Just to kind of get a little bit more. And then uh, just a little bit of a vin vignette. Something like that. Just give it a little bit of mood. Um, but yeah, very cool moment. It's always exciting seeing these, these grizzlies along the roadside. But keep your distance, folks. <laughs> All right, that was from, I think I said the name already, but yeah, Nicole Askew. Thank you for submitting this photo, Nicole. Nicely done. <laughs> I love this shot. This is from uh, Walter Cunningham. I don't know what kind of bird this is. Maybe it's a Donald Trump bird. Look at that hair. <laughs> Golly, what an awesome bird, huh? Look at those little legs. Uh, yeah, I like this shot a lot. It's cool. I like the little shimmer you got in the eye. Uh, it's just a little bit, it just feels a little bit uh, right heavy. See how there's more dead space on the left here than the right? So I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna do an eight and a half by 11 crop and, uh, and just get rid of some of that dead space. Yeah, I like that a lot better. Uh, maybe do a subject detect on this little, this little hairdo rocking fella <laughs> and just darken the background like that see that makes the bird pop a lot more and yeah other than that I think it's a great shot it's a great pose beautiful little bird so nicely done Walter Walter Cunningham all right we're almost to the end folks bear with me this is a, a stag or some kind of 
deer that's not in the states. I don't know what kind of what kind of deer this is, but it's a beautiful animal. This shot is from Chris Gray, and uh, I really like the shot, Chris. It's great. It's a great edit. I love the separation in the background. Uh, it's very very sharp. Looks like he nailed focus on this animal, this antlered animal. <laughs> uh, I love again. I love this dark background. If you can get a dark background, it just makes the subject pop a lot more. Um, one thing about this photo that I see off right off the bat is if there's other animals in the background, unless they're doing something really interesting, like if they're looking up to, uh, or you get a little bit of separation between them, I would try to, if you could have walked around just to completely get rid of them, like if you were to walk maybe 10 feet to the left, and just get this one, just get this one animal in there, this one deer thing, <laughs> moose, elk, deer, looks like a mix of all three, <laughs> but um, those, those animals in the background, they just kind of get distracting if they're not doing something cool, if they were all looking up, you know, where you get separation between the, the three of them, and they're all looking at the camera, it could be cool, um, but since they're just eating there, it just, it's, it's an element of distraction, um, so I would have just walked around a little bit, if you could have, to just include this this fella but uh even add a little bit more contrast but uh yeah beautiful shot uh chris i really like it and it's a very clean edit so nicely done so this shot is is super moody this is a great horned owl by uh trenton timberlake so this is obviously Justin Timberlake's little brother doing wildlife targeting. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, or maybe I'm not. So Trenton, uh, beautiful shot, man. The, the thing that stands out to me right away is this bright highlight here on the right. So again, if you could just maneuver yourself around to where you get just more of this clean background here. Because right away, if there's just a bright blown out section of the photo, it's just going to take your eye right to that bright. Your, your eye is drawn to the brightest part of the photo. Um, so if you could have just walked a little bit to the right and avoided that, that would have been perfect. Um, but for now, I'm just going to crop that out and it's going to be a little bit tight. Um, but some, something, something like that. And obviously that's not an ideal composition by any means, but it just gets rid of that, um, uh, that brightest part of the photo. And if we go to subject detect here, invert it, I'm going to darken that background. Let's see what it looks like quite a bit darker. That's booty. Dehaze it just a little bit. Add a little bit of coolness to it. Yeah, see that? Gives it that kind of punch you need to, to really bring your eye into the owl. Um, and I just think that looks a lot better than it does with, the, with that bright white highlight there. But it's a really cool shot. I dig the edit. Um, one thing I will say too is I think you went a little bit overboard on brightening this left eye. Uh, it just looks brighter than the right. And that's just something, you know, it's good to brighten up the animal's eyes to make them pop more, but um, you got to watch out. If, if one's way brighter than the other, it just starts to look a little bit unnatural. Uh, but it's a beautiful shot. It looks, maybe it had been raining or something. It almost looks a little bit wet, a lot of textures in it. Um, but yeah, let's go to the original. See how that, that, that spot, it just, it, it, it just, it, I, my eye is directly drawn to it. So I would say that. But very nicely done, Trenton. Thanks for your submission. This is a, maybe a condor or a vulture of some sort, photographed by May Friedman. Friedman? Friedman. Sorry if I'm butchering that, May. But uh, it's, a, it's a cute shot. Well, I guess it's not very cute. It looks like it's gonna kill me. But um, very, very interesting looking animal. I wanna say it's a condor, but I don't wanna offend any condor experts out there if you're like no that's a vulture boy <laughs> but uh it's cool uh one thing that i notice uh, right away is the focus is on the beak so the eyes out of focus and when you're photographing wildlife you always want the eye to be the sharpest part of the photo um and sometimes it's hard to get focus you know you might have been trying to get the eye and it, the camera just wanted to focus on the beak because it's the bigger portion of the face but if you could have got the eyes in focus, it would have looked a lot sharper, a lot cleaner. And then see how you cropped these little hair tufts, uh, little Albert Einstein <laughs> hair 
out of it. I would have left a little bit more breathing room on the top so you get the ends of those hairs. Um, and yeah, I think that would have that would have made it a lot better. But let's see if we let's try cropping this as a, almost like a square. If we crop this as a square, what what does that do to it? Let's see. I I personally like that better as a square. I don't think you need more of the sides like that. And then if we were to add a more of a vignette to it here, just to draw you in a little bit more. What else? Maybe bring the coolness down a little bit. I think that makes it look pretty, pretty dang moody. Bring the contrast up a little bit. And yeah, it's a, it's a really nice shot though. I like it. It's a, it's a very interesting looking creature. Those, if it, I think it's a condor. They're awesome birds. They got like a nine foot wingspan or something crazy like that. But anyways, thank you for the submission, May. And uh, also for the kind words. I read your email. That was, that was very sweet of you to say, so I appreciate it. All right, last photo, you guys. Last photo. Boom. I love this shot. So this is some sandhill cranes by Ryan Murphy. And what strikes me right off the bat does this not look like like a football game where these two here are like the coaches on the sideline and this guy's trying to make the epic, you know, Super Bowl touchdown game winner and they're like, yeah, touchdown, don't drop it, you fool. <laughs> That's what this looks like to me. And uh, it's cool. I love the movement. I love how it looks like they're cheering them on. Now, I would bring a little bit of contrast into this and crop it also. I think there's too much dead space on the left. Well, if we crop that, also too much dead space on the bottom here. See how there's uh, there's just too much dead space down there. So if we bring that up a little bit, I like that crop a lot better. If we bring the whites up, it'll make them pop more. And then just bring the contrast up some like that. Yeah, yeah. And that brings it up. That makes it a lot more contrasty. Um, might bring the, the temperature down a little bit, but... It's really cool. It's a cool moment, man, uh, Ryan. And uh, yeah, like I said, it just is funny to me. <laughs> it totally looks like a football game. Touchdown! Let's hope he caught it, huh? And that, my friends, is the last photo. So again, really, really appreciate everybody who submitted photos. Sorry I couldn't get to everybody. It would have been an hour and a half long video if I did. Um, but let me know in the comments if you guys want more videos like this. I'd be happy to do more in the future. I love doing stuff like this. It's a lot of fun for me to look at y'all's photos. It really is. Because um, you guys do some beautiful, beautiful work. So if you want more videos like this in the future, smash that like button. I'm going to sound like one of those cringy YouTubers. <laughs> and uh, leave a comment down below. Hit that subscribe button. And uh, follow me on Instagram at Isaac's Picks because when I when I do videos like this I post on my stories on there um, to where you can submit a photo to have me critique I really hope you guys found this helpful that's all I want to do is is help improve your photography because it's a long process um, and my opinions don't get me wrong my opinions are not perfect you know this is just my perspective on on photography and and, and my personal preference on editing and, and some little tweaks so, um, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video, and we will see you on the next episode.